this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. This is Inventor Down the Rabbit Hole Network coming at you guys with a pretty cool story. Okay, so this is a story about Tom Ogle. Tom Ogle was a 21-year-old inventor American who was able to run a vapor engine, vapor carburetor, 100 miles per gallon. And this is the story here. Okay, so let's get right into it. And yes, I live in a fucked up area, so bear with me. Whatever happened to Tom Ogle? His super carburetor gave 100 miles per gallon on a 427-inch V8 1974 Galaxy. Did the world not go green because of a murder? Maybe two murders. The world is telling us to go green from Sesame Street to the campaign trail. And going green has become as much of a marketing tool as a call for action. But what most Americans don't know is that these problems were solved 30 years ago by a brilliant invention of a Texas high school dropout. In 1978, I first interviewed Tom Ogle, who created a device replacing the carburetor and allowed his 4,000 pound car to get 100 miles per gallon. He should have gone on to change history and become one of the world's richest men. He was young, confident, and feared nothing. But he was wrong, dead wrong. Four years later, Tom, at age 24, was in his grave and his invention buried. And by the way, this article is from fuelefficientvehicles.org. If you guys want to check it out, that's the original uh, story here. Okay, so let's continue. I stood outside the Smuggler's Inn, a restaurant in El Paso, where I just interviewed Tom Ogle, only 21 and perhaps one of America's greatest inventors. He was leaning against his 1970 Ford Galaxy, fitted with a black box filter. The big gas guzzler was getting more than 100 miles per gallon. That's when I told him, Tom, I think you are one of the most important people on earth right now. Smoking a cigarette, flashing a $1,200 watch and a 3.5 carat diamond ring, he replied, Confidently, I hope so. My invention will save the world. Are you afraid of oil companies and Arabs coming after you? I asked. No, not anymore. I've had too much publicity. If I'd kept my invention a secret, I might be wrong. I might be worrying. But there's nothing to worry about anymore. Tom said, the hundred miles per gallon returns he was seeing on his then standard four thousand pound car was only the beginning of his newfound fuel efficiency. Tom felt confident that on the smaller, lighter cars, then only popular in Europe, he could get nine times as much. Nine times as much. That means in today's lightweight automobiles, he would be driving around getting 400 to 900 miles per gallon and even gas-guzzling Hummers and giant SUVs Tom never lived to see might be more efficient than today's best hybrid cars. He did away with the carburetor and fuel pump, replacing them with the black box he called a filter. The super mileage, he said, was due to a pressurized, vaporized fuel system that injected gasoline vapor, not liquid, directly into the engine's firing chambers. The modified car, extensively tested, and engineers found no evidence of fraud. In one test for the media, Ogo drove his Galaxy, which unmodified got about 13 miles per gallon, 200 miles on a measured two gallons of gasoline. The results were so astonishing that the car was inspected for hidden fuel tanks. None were found. And those who drove with him confirmed that they had never stopped to refuel. 
Doubters became believers. Scientists were convinced his invention dubbed the Ogomobile would soon reach world markets and earn millions. Tom Ogo was checked out by corporate engineers and the U.S. government who were astonished to discover the invention actually worked. At the time, I had talked with the late Senator Gaylord Nelson. How's that for a fucking name? Excuse my language. Um, Dem Wiss, which I'm guessing a Democrat of Wisconsin or something. Not totally sure there. Okay, so moving on. A longtime contact of mine and a pioneer for the U.S. fuel economy standards about, about what this could mean for all of us. The potential benefits are too great for it to be ignored, said the senator, and had asked the U.S. Department of Transportation to make a thorough investigation of Ogo's system, but was met with a wait-and-see response from officials. Another big supporter of Ogle's invention was Professor Gerald Hawkins of Texas A&M University, holder of a doctorate in mechanical engineering with a background in gas dynamics and aerospace study. This is no hoax, said Dr. Hawkins. Ogle eliminated the carburetor and achieved what the gasoline internal combustion engine was supposed to do all along, to operate off fumes. For most of the world, the name Tom Ogle has never been heard or at least long forgotten but 30 years later can i still he- but 30 years later can i still hear tom ogle's voice from our recorded interviews promising the world better future a better future really but somebody wrote that wrong it all started with a lawnmower during our interview the eager young inventor revealed how he had discovered his fuel efficient system by accident. I was messing around with the lawnmower when I accidentally knocked a hole in the fuel tank. I put a vacuum line running from the tank straight into the carburetor inlet. I just let it run and it kept running and running, but the fuel level stayed the same. I got excited. The lawnmower was running without a carburetor and getting tremendous efficient efficiency. The engine got hot. Ogo used the fan to cool it off, to cool it, and was amazed when it ran 96 hours on the remaining fuel in the mo- in the mower's small tank. And here's a video if you guys want to check it out. Uh, electric generator running on vapors only. I can't play it or I'll get straight up copyrighted. Um, continuing on. It's your boy coming in. Okay, We went from the lawnmower to the automobile converting a car in the same manner. Its engine started immediately, but the gas tank collapsed inwards, um, kind of like a, uh, instead of an explosion, an implosion. Let's put it that way. It took months of reinforcing gas tanks because he solved the vacuum problem. But the car, without its carburetor and fuel pumps, still had no acceleration. It couldn't run faster than 20 miles per hour, and the modified engine averaged only 8 miles to the gallon and stalled after a few miles. It actually does that. Let me pause here for a second. I did reproduce his device on a chainsaw motor, two-stroke, and yes, it stops after a while because the tank gets cold and you need to warm it up somehow, right? Okay, moving on. One time he crawled under the stalled car to examine its gas tank and found it was freezing cold. That is literally no joke, guys. I've seen it with my own eyes. Wish I still had five acres to experiment, but anyways, moving on. It was freezing cold like an ice cube. As I was suck as I was sucking vapor out, it was acting like a refrigerator with liquid on the bottom and the fumes to the top. When he warmed the gas tank, when he warmed the gas tank with heater coils, the mile, the miles per gallon skyrocketed to over a hundred mpg, and Tomogo never looked back. He believed his system was the answer to the road's pollution problems and demonstrated virtually zero pollutant emissions coming from the engine's exhaust. Soon, Tom found himself courted by oil companies and financiers 
everyone predicted he was he would become a billionaire. A few months before I had met him, he was contacted by C.F. Ramsey, an international financier, who wanted to buy Tom's patent and the marketing rights to the old Ogomobile. If he took that money, he would be filthy rich, and his invention would have been black shelved. But instead, he took the uh, Stanley Meyer. John Badini route and got straight whacked. Okay, moving on. Ramsey told me by phone, we signed a preliminary agreement with Tom Ogle the very next day after we saw the invention. All kinds of people were in town. J.C. Penney, Transamerica, General Motors, Ford, and others, specifically Shell Oil. Remember that one, Shell Oil. Offered Tom $25 million. You should have took that one, Tommy boy. R.I.P. though, no joke. Everybody was after him. But in every case, the proposed backers wanted controlling interest in Tom's patent. Well, yeah, that's what 25 million means. It's mine and not yours. They wanted to stick Tom off in a laboratory, and that would have been the end of Tom Ogo and his fuel-efficient system. And it was. That exa- That is exactly what happened. Ramsey signed a contract which let Tom which let Ogo work on his device with financing from Ramsey who would take over the patent distribution and development rights of the Ogo mobile with thousands flowing in the confident Tom Ogo I had met was quickly building the life of luxury and extravagance a few months after my first interview his backer CF Ramsey sold out to Advanced Fuel Systems Incorporated. In June of 1978, a pre-planned handoff. Tom was a bit nervous in my later phone calls, but all seemed to be well. He would continue receiving $5,000 a month and funds for research and development. He would also get 6% royalties when the device came to the market. Advanced Fuel's own engineers would develop the Ogs, the Ogomobile for marketing and in April 1979, a still very ambitious Tom Ogo opened the first of a planned 1,000 nationwide diagnostics car centers. But Ogo's first and only car center soon closed and his monthly check stopped. Ogo was told he would get no royalties because, because AFS was working on advanced fuel systems was working on a device that got similar results be but wasn't his invention in other words they straight jacked his invention they just uh re- reverse engineered it and told them peace out dude we don't need your shit no more excuse my language again but i highly doubt young people watch this channel anyway but if you do shout out to you guys i hope you build these type of devices shot and poisoned I didn't even know he was poisoned. I thought they just gave him the JFK treatment. Shot and poisoned. I guess that's a double whack. Dot com, huh? Continuing in his spiraling downfall from quick success and media attention in 1981, Monica Tom's wife left him and took along their five year old daughter, Sherry. Then on April 14th, he was shot in the street by someone who got away. Yet he survived the incident. Some Phil Snyder stuff. They had to try more than once with this guy, huh? Rest in peace, Phil Snyder. That's another story. (laughs) Dumb bases, deep underground military bases, RIP to him. But anyways, back on subject. On August 18th, a broken and forgotten Tom Ogle drunk left the smugglers in the same place that I first met him that night. He went to a friend's apartment and collapsed. He was declared dead at El Paso's Eastwood Hospital. His death, which involved a combination of Darvon, a prescribed painkiller, and alcohol, was ruled accidental or suicide. Many believed it was a cover-up for murder, which it absolutely was. You don't make a car run 100 miles per gallon and don't get murdered. I mean, let's be real, guys and gals. Ogo had been gravitating towards gambling at the pool table and began losing a lot of money in his gambling forays. He indicated to his attorney, Bobby Perrell, 
that he believed people were drugging his drinks. There you go. How's that for the truth? Peril was skeptical. Haterade in, in Peril's drink for sure. Um, but on August 19, 1981, Ogo collapsed and died from what an autopsy showed was an overdose of Darvon and alcohol. The death was wrote to be a suicide after a, cu a cursory investigation, whatever that is. But several people close to Ogo indicated that they did not believe that Ogo would, would or could kill himself. I mean, why would you kill yourself if you just invented one of the coolest things ever? Let's come on now. That's pretty self-explanatory. He was... He was only drinking because they stole his invention and he was butthurt about it. Not only did they steal it, the other offers probably went away. And Shell Company did their own thing. Like I said, remember that Shell Company. I'm going to get to an article about them too. Okay, so postscript. In 1989, another American inventor, Stanley Allen Meyer, claimed to have invented. You know what? We're going to skip this one because I already have videos on Stanley Meyer. That's just a much more efficient, different type of device. But let's go here to the Ogo fuel system by Gregory Jones. Okay, check him out right there. 21 years old in the prime of his life. Just a straight up mechanic. No, no degrees, none of that stuff. Just. Any of you guys could really do this if you put your mind to it. But let me tell you guys one important thing. The cars nowadays will not allow this type of fuel system because the computers in them and all that stuff. I tried. You're going to have to use some type of go-kart engine or a chainsaw motor. Some type of two-stroke that has no computer on it. But if you really got money, you can buy a standalone computer and, and give it all the orders you want. Okay, so back to this. Greg by Gregory Jones. Check out Tom Ogo right there in his prime. He insists there were no hidden fuel tanks or other alternative fuel sources used to power a two-ton automobile for 205 miles Saturday on only two gallons of gas. Gasoline fumes, really. There's Tom Ogo right there. This car jacked up. Also looking at the uh, vapor system. In the back. Ogo isn't alone. Others verify his work. Carl Wright, for example, has been working on internal combustion machines for 35 years. He is a certified teacher of auto mechanics and is currently shop foreman at PEX Automobile Service, where Ogo built his controversial energy saving fuel efficient system. It's no hoax. It's no hoax, Reich said. It's straightforward fashion. There were no hidden tanks. Wright, who has no vested interests in the invention, said at first he was skeptical of the young man's invention. I've watched the thing from the time they built the fuel tank to the very present, Wright said. It looks to me like it'll do what Tom said it would do. Wright said, any secret fuel compartments would have required many extra man hours by Ogo to install in the car body. He only worked on the car during office hours, Wright said, and he didn't have a key to the door to get into the automobile shop during off hours or weekends. Experts, experts probe Ogo's fuel efficiency system. He... There's Tom Ogo again. Real good picture of him. Rest in peace. He did not deserve what they did to him, but that's how the oil cartels operate. They'll poison you so quick, it'll make your damn head spin. He has not been working on the car at nights, and the car has been locked up here every night, Wright, Wright said. James Peck, who owns Peck's Automobile, Automotive, excuse me, Peck's Automotive, has a 50-50 partnership on any royalties from the invention, and he said he would stake his 30-year professional reputation in Northeast El Paso on the fact that there was no hoax involved in Saturday's test drive. I personally believe Ogo had some help somewhere along the way developing the system, although he will not admit to that. 
but I can vouch that the system works. It's no hoax. It was my car. He converted. We built system in my shop. I'll put my name on the line. It definitely works. Pack said he provided financial back backing for Ogo's invention. After he and Ogo met about a month ago and discussed the system. Frank Haynes Jr. is registered state engineer with degrees from the University of Texas at, at Austin and Southern Methodist University. He was at PAX Automotive Saturday where he looked at the system over and talked to Togo. From what I saw, there was no hoax, Haynes said, adding that he learned of Ogo's invention in the Times. I decided to venture out and see what was going on, he said. I had never even heard of Tom Ogo before, but I'm familiar with combustion from previous work and wondered what the kid had come up with. What I saw was very convincing, Haynes said. Haynes said he felt the only chance of a hoax might have been in the amount of fuel that actually was in the tank prior to the test drive Saturday. Reporters and onlookers witnessed the mechanic at PEX empty the special pressurized gas tanks and pour two gallons of fuel into the tank after it was empty. Little bit of that H2O for my engine. Okay, so Haynes said he was additionally convinced of the system's authenticity by the fact it was difficult to start the car before heading the Deming. The car had to be primed quite thoroughly in order to run. That gave me the idea that there weren't any fumes in the system after drainage. That was quite convincing for me personally. If there had been hidden fuel, there wouldn't have been any difficulty in starting the car. According to how Ogo described the system, the Mihain said. Haynes described Ogo as an open, earnest young man who convinced me everything he said should be true. Ogo all along has maintained nothing but simple trust in his invention. It works, he said frankly. There is no hoax. He described his Saturday test drive in which a Times reporter participated as a beautiful performance. Ogo added with a chuckle that the return to El Paso from Deming was made with one pint and two ounces of fuel left in the fuel tank. He did pretty good though. We made 205 miles on less than two gallons, he added. He said he maintained constant 55 to 60 mile per hour speed. 1979 US patent number 4,177,779 fuel economy system for an internal combustion engine. Two hundred miles on two gallons of gas. El Paso Times, Texas, Sunday, May first, nineteen seventy-seven. By John Dosard. Once I get to Deming and back, I'll have everybody banging at my door. Tom Ogo exclaimed. It was as uncommon, sentient. That may very well prove to be true. Saturday, the 34-year-old inventor mechanic climbed behind the wheel. I think they meant to say 24-year-old. Climbed behind the wheel of his 1970 Ford Galaxy and headed down the road towards both the dusty New Mexico town and possible fame, a fortune, and a solution to the energy crisis. With only two gallons of gasoline in the tank, Ogo offered strong evidence that the tangle of red hoses and tubes racing between the back of the 5,000 pound car and to the engine 
performed as billed, delivering over 100 miles to the gallon, while averaging close to 60 miles per hour. Indeed, in a day of automotive and personal triumph, the only sour note was sounded when Ogo failed to bring his gas saver back into El Paso as planned. On the outskirts of town, just a few miles from his final goal, a rock struck the underside of the car, puncturing the filter and allowing the gas fumes the auto travels to escape. But it really hardly mattered at that point. Ogo had traveled 205 miles on slightly less than two gallons of gas. Some of the precious liquid had been spilled when first poured in the tank. I use about four gallons of gas every two weeks, Ogo said. But then I drive an awful lot. Actually, Saturday's performance was rather modest, Ogo claims. His system will average about 160 miles per gallon in city driving treatment average of 12 miles per gallon. I fixed up my car, a 1972 Thunderbird, with a 429 cubic inch engine with the system, Ogo said. I then took it to the Cloud Croft and back on two gallons, about 200 miles. And I still had enough to drive around when I got back in town. The odd thing about Ogo's system is that doesn't add complex gadgets and intricate gimmicks. Intricate gimmicks. Instead, it removes the carburetor, a piece of the engine long considered sacred. Engineer said it wouldn't work because without a carburetor, there's nothing to vaporize the fuel. Ogo explained during the trip across the hot desert. They couldn't understand that it's already working on vapors. Instead, everybody keeps trying to add something to the carburetor while nobody thought of taking off taking the thing off nobody thought of taking the thing off basically the system uses a standard engine with a few modifications in lay of the carburetor there is a series of hoses feeding a mixture of gas vapors excuse me and air directly into the engine gas in the tank passes through a series of filters which stretch the energy available in each gallon. The blank also stores excess vapors for later use for up to 45 days. Premium gas is needed as its higher octane levels allows for more vapors to build. Not only does Ogo's car promise more miles per gallon, but he says it will clean the environment while causing its while causing its owner fewer repair headaches. It will top anything on the road today, being smoother, better running, and more efficient, Ogo said. The life of your car will be two times longer because there will be no carbon buildup. The carbon comes from the unburned gas. But we burnt but we burn it all. You won't have a need. You won't have need at all for the catalytic converters for the air because it's already so clean, 95% cleaner. You won't even need the catalytic converter no more. Before the journey began, two times reporters looked the car over for possible hidden sources of fuel and found none. Then a brief ceremony emptying the gas tank this is pretty much a going over of what we already went through so yeah very awesome we're gonna stop there so yeah that's the tom ogle story and then we're gonna go ahead and read a little bit of this story as well which is from hammings.com big oil conspiracy 376 gallons opal uncovered and this one here remember how they said all oh, shell was interested in his design well they did the same thing as the advanced fuel systems company they just stole his idea 
Um, this is absolutely a shell company car. There's no doubt about it. You could even... The front of it has a shell logo, but for whatever reason, they're not showing it here. I'll show it. So you guys could get a better idea of what I'm saying here. Okay, so as you could see here, this is the car. Straight up shell, right on the front of it. And my understanding, this was a contest between their engineers. It wasn't even on the books. They just did it just because. So yeah, this gets 377 miles per gallon. It was produced by Shell. I mean, I don't know how much more evidence you need there. And then this is a video that you can watch on YouTube that also that also shows the actual Shell car that runs 377 miles per gallon. But I can't play it or else I'll get a copyright strike. But yeah, you guys could check that out. Shell oils, 377 mile per gallon, 1959 Opal. Video on YouTube. Okay, so. The part that I want to read here is pretty much just this part. There's no point in going into the story because I already directed you guys towards the video. But it says right here. Some folks at Shell Oil Company wrote fuel economy of the gasoline engine. It was published by John Wiley and Sons, New York, in 1977. On page 42, Shell Oil quotes, The president of General Motors, he in 1929 predicted 80 miles per gallon by 1939. Between pages 221 and 223, Shell writes of their achievements, 49.73 miles per gallon around 1939. 149 miles per gallon with a 1947 Studebaker in 1949, 244 miles per gallon with a 1959 Fiat 600 in 1968, 376 miles per gallon with a 1959 Opal in 1973. Right around the Tom Ogle time, if you're paying attention, the Library of Congress in September 1990 did not have a copy of this book. It was missing from the files. I brought my copy from Maryland Book Exchange around 1980 after a professor informed me that it was used as an engineering text at the University of West Virginia. VPI published a paper March 1979 concerning maximum achievable fuel economy. This paper has several charts illustrating achievable and impossible fuel economy. About 1980, I contacted the author concerning conflicts between the papers and the documented achieved impossible MPG. The author said, I will get back to you, and I am still waiting for his response. Okay, so that's pretty much enough on the shell car company re uh, replication of Tom Ogle's device. Um, but I'll show you guys some pictures of it here. It's still intact. Oh, yeah, and they ended up selling it for like. 350 grand so check that out still intact there it is and then I guess Pepsi Cola and and Pab Pab ST Pab however you say that probably helped fund it because their names on the side and yeah, see, they sold it here for 375000 because they know it's not a regular car. It has that, that Ogo Mobile modification in it. But yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed the story. This is Inventor Down the Rabbit Hole Network coming at you guys with the Tom Ogo story. If you guys like these story type videos, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button if you actually like the video. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Your boy coming in. I will be coming in some more too. I enjoy. Thank you guys too for your support of the channel. And I enjoy this stuff as much as you guys do. That's why I, that's why I report on it. Have a good day. Have a good rest of the year. I'm out this piece.